So I just basically put one in and then and then uh, patterned them back. And again, this was all called out on their on the manufacturer's drawing sheet. Um, so then, of course, if you used um, weld mints, this I just put in a sketch for the length, and uh, this was a piece of bar stock that um, strengthens the tread. And I think maybe I'll do a, cu a cutaway so you guys can see it better here. Yeah. So there's a piece of bar stock on there. And then um, it has diamonds cut in it for these um, support pieces front to back. And I believe I patterned it in one direction and then the other. And so everywhere those pass through, um, there's actually a diamond hole there. And let's see what else. And then this was the first plate of um, the, they're all support plates and this is all welded assembly. So these plates here are copied back <clears throat> and you get the whole tread minus the uh, toe kick. And then the surface cut is for the smaller tread, the one that's up at the um, landing. And I think I must have had also one of these must have been left over, so there's a body delete. And then the last thing is the toe kick. And so I basically made it so that um, each configuration changes some of the information as far as I think that um, if I had to guess it probably changes the original dimensions in the sketch uh, probably specifically this number if I go to uh, 28 by 12 let's see what it does yeah it changes that dimension and then everything else is built off that square so this is the driving sketch so that's the uh, stair tread and like I said in a later model uh, it's on a different page I didn't copy it over because I actually copied this out of the working folder um, there is a blob version of this where I blow out all of those all these bodies and then I just made a solid block um, to represent the stair tread nope no, no, just shut up. So, the harder part in the learning curve when I got this job was to make these parametric. I wanted to be able to just type some numbers in and have the stair treads change, have the um, angle of the stairs change, and have it based on some sort of input formula. And I probably still would do a couple things different, but overall it's fairly robust. So, if I open this assembly up, just the stair tread itself, uh, what you'll find is I've got the rails and I've got the tread and then I've got a pattern. And so they're driven and if I look at just the rails, I have a master sketch that controls everything which is this sketch here. And a number of the things that you'll note about these stairs is there's an offset to the first tread, which is this dimension here. There's also a maximum distance to the top of the runner that this tread sits at. And I believe that's one inch down. So this is um, a 10 inch um, C channel. And I had some other ones that were different. So this 10 inch dimension can be changed. and. You know, you actually could drive this from Excel, too. I'm not sure that that wouldn't maybe even be a better idea because you really then could do conditional formatting and things like that and drive um, an output page from a smart page. But I just did this with formulas in, in SolidWorks. So this is 10-inch C-channel, and the tread is down 1 inch. This is the line that the tread doesn't pass beyond. Um, 